In today's show, we're looking ahead to a really busy Wednesday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. There are 12 games on Wednesday. Let's look ahead right now. First game, Nets Sixers. Um, we don't know whether Kyrie Irving is going to play. This is a back-to-back for the Nets. Um, so we have to assume that Kevin Durant won't play. We have to assume that Blake Griffin won't play. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, we don't know whether he's going to be back from his non-COVID-related illness. And we don't know if Kyrie's going to play. But Nick Claxton started on Tuesday. Um, And if Aldridge isn't ready to go, we're probably going to get another Claxo start. So I do want to see how he looks. It was frustrating that they started him. That was great. But then they played him the same minutes as DeAndre Jordan. But let's see what happens if we don't have Aldridge and Durant and Harden and Irving and and, um, Griffin as well. Could be a big opportunity for him. Also, could be a big opportunity for Aldridge. If there is no Kyrie, KD, or um, Kevin Durant, it could be a big game for LaMarcus Aldridge. He's been blocking a ton of shots. So if he is ready to go, this could be a really interesting opportunity for him. For the Sixers, I just want to see MB. Look, look, whoever it is, whether it is Claxton, whether it is Aldridge that's out there, Embiid's going to dominate them. He's been unbelievable this season, even in limited minutes. He just tears blokes apart. Uh, he tears blokes apart. I think he's going to do it again. I also want to watch a little bit of Seth Curry. I do not think that he's a 12-team league guy. We still don't have George Hill returning. That's going to absolutely put the nail in his coffin for 12-team value. I think he's more of a streamer, and I think that he's a droppable guy. But let's see what he can do in this one. Next game we look at is the Cavs and the Hornets. Jarrett Allen is going to be returning alongside Larry Nance. So how he looks in his after his absence, yeah, week long, a weeks long absence for concussion, how he looks is going to be pretty intriguing. And what does that all mean for Dean Wade, who's been starting and playing 30 plus minutes and being a 12 team league fantasy player? But with Allen, Nance, and Love all seemingly ahead of him in terms of the minutes pecking order, Wade's value is going to tumble. So how they use him is going to be pretty intriguing. For the Hornets, Jalen McDaniels, Jesus, they I hate when I miss a spelling mistake. Uh Jalen Jalen McDaniels. Um, playing well. Again, he's a must-roster player. Don't know that that lasts because Haywood, Ball, and Monk all have to return. But for now, hey, he's putting up some great, great numbers, and I want to see how that looks. Well, Cody Zeller came off the bench behind Bismack Biombo in Tuesday's game. Um, to me, he's clearly the best center there, but you know, they, they bring him off the bench and they, they play him significantly fewer minutes than Biombo, which never makes any sense in terms of the way that um, Borrego runs that rotation. But can Zeller have value? If he's going to play like 15 minutes, then no which is what happened on Tuesday. But I'd like to see how that looks. Next game we look at is the Spurs and the Raptors. The Spurs, one of the most boring fantasy teams at the moment. Rudy Gabe, yeah, pops his head up occasionally to be a 12-team league player. Let's see how he looks, and let's see what impact he has on Keldon Johnson, because they're basically splitting those power forward minutes at this point, and that's making Johnson probably a fringe 14-team league guy, not a 12-teamer, of course. Um, and Gay is probably that fringe 12-14-team to, to 14 team league player as well. For the Raptors, we're not going to have Fred Van Vliet playing. Um, we had Kyle Lowry resting, so he should return. So what does that mean for Malachi Flynn? Now, Flynn started off pretty quiet on Tuesday, but exploded late, played a ton of minutes. Probably won't get the 35 minutes if Lowry returns, but he, he's he's actually undeniably good, Malachi Flynn. So he should be getting 25-plus minutes a night. Let's see how they use him here. And then Chris Boucher, who, unfortunately, we saw Ken Birch get the bulk of those minutes, which was something that, you know, that I've been talking about for a while. And it happened in this game. Will it happen again against the Spurs? Will Birch get the start? There is uh, some big question marks there about Boucher and his value as we move forward. The Clippers and the Pistons back-to-back here for the Clippers. Reggie Jackson you know, continues to be the starter with Patrick Beverly out. So you know, he, I, I think he is a 12-team league player at this point, Reggie. Putting up some pretty uh, pretty good numbers most nights. It's not every night, but putting up some pretty good numbers there. While Marcus Morris Sr., he's just been unbelievable in terms of the shooting numbers. And at some point, you do feel they have to cool off. 
but they're just they're undeniable at this stage. Again, that the numbers just consistently are good in terms of scoring from Marcus Morris. While for the Pistons, again, unbelievably, Corey Joseph has like doubled his assist rate. He's playing a ton of minutes. Will we see that bullshit again from Dwayne Casey? He should be the player they're least giving the minutes to, but that's the guy they're giving the most minutes to. Dennis Smith remains out, so there's another big opportunity for Joseph. Also for the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay. Um, he's a, a guy that. Yeah, he's a little bit up and down. Minutes, shooting numbers, but he should be a 12-team league player. But he started to develop a little bit more consistency of late. So I'd like to see how that looks. Next up, we look at the Knicks and the Pelicans. Nerlens Noel, I believe, is a must-roster player. There's going to be nights when him and Taj Gibson almost split the minutes, which is frustrating. But majority of the time, Noel is the guy. Well, Alfred Payton, just what are his minutes? Is it 17? Is it 21? Is it 28? Is he a 12% shooter or a 70% shooter? Like, he's all over the shop. So let's see how Thibodeau uh, mishandles that rotation. For the Pelicans, I want to watch Kyra Lewis, and I want to see him get big minutes. I probably won't see it, but I do want to see that. Because last game, he, I thought he played pretty well, but had some foul trouble, and that limited his overall playing time. I don't think Van Gundy's going to make the move and supplant Eric Bledsoe with Kyra Lewis or anything along those lines. Whether he puts Weza Wundu or Naji Marshall into that uh, starting lineup is, is still up in the air but I want to see Lewis get more. And Zion Williamson is just unstoppable. So he's always just fun to watch. Let's see if he can start to develop um, anything that isn't... Yeah, look, we know his points, we know his field goal percentage. Let's watch the assists keep developing. Let's see some defensive stats start to come from Zion. Next up, we look at the Magic and the Bulls. Wendell Carter Jr. um, against his former team, of course. Uh, Mo Bumba is questionable. If Bumba plays, what is the minute split between these two? These two Is it 30 minutes for Carter or 24 minutes? That's a big question mark. While RJ Hampton has been getting more run. Now, Gary Harris does return for this one. Otto Porter will be out. So how does uh, Hampton go in terms of playing time? How many minutes do they give to former Bulls legend Gary Harris as well? For the Bulls, Zach Levine really rolling at the moment on a big hot streak in terms of scoring. But most importantly, I think or almost as importantly has been the way that he's been able to improve his assist rate. So big numbers for his assists. While Pat Williams, um, his offense has been a disaster, really. He's not doing anything um, at the moment, Um, not getting to the line, not taking any shots. The steals are good, and that's really where he is. But I want to see if he can get something going offensively because Troy Brown Jr. is cutting into his playing time. The Bucks and the Wolves, is Yanni going to return? Giannis, and he took a tom or two. Um, I wouldn't think they'd want to rush him back against Minnesota, but if he's ready to go, he'll be out there. And how does he look when he plays? And what does that mean for Punch Bob, who's been playing some pretty good minutes, Bobby Portis? And he is a 12-team league guy while Yanni is out. I'd still probably hold him for at least the first game that Yanni returns. For the Wolves, will D'Angelo Russell play? It is a back-to-back. He's on limited minutes. He played limited minutes on Tuesday as well. Will he play? And how's Josh Okogie looking? In that starting lineup, they're continuing to force-feed him minutes. He looks clearly ahead of Jarrett Culver at, at this point. Um, he's not doing anything for fantasy, but his role and those extra minutes do impact the value of guys like Rubio and Russell as well. For the Warriors and the Thunder, Kent Bazemore will get another start, most likely with Kelly Oubre doubtful. Bazemore is providing some really solid stream value at the moment, so he is a guy that you can look to now. Streaming on a 12-game Wednesday is probably impossible, but he's putting up some good numbers. While Kevon Looney surpassed 30 minutes last game with James Wiseman out. Is he going to get that sort of playing time again? That puts him into that 16-14 to team league territory. For the Thunder, Isaiah Roby returned on Tuesday straight into the starting lineup, basically took the minutes away from Tony Bradley. I think he's a 12-team league guy. Uh, I don't want to see how he looks here. Well, Lou Dort went absolutely bananas against Utah. I do not believe that that is Dort for a second. I would not be rushing to grab him in 12-team leagues, but he looked pretty good. So let's see what he's able to do, and let's see if he uh, can follow up a big game with an absolute clunker, which uh, would be my guess. Paces and the Rockets. Back-to-back for Indiana. Justin Holiday. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Holiday is just a uh, a streamer for threes and steals at this stage. He is getting decent minutes. Um... Yeah, 28 or 29, but it's not the 33, 34 he was getting earlier this season. Well, I also want to watch Goga Badadze because with Miles Turner out, and we don't know if Miles is going to be out again, um, Goga has been playing okay. Didn't play particularly well on Tuesday, though. Um, Let's see how he looks. For the Rockets, uh, cousin Kev, Kevin Porter Jr., really impressive last game, putting up big numbers next to John Wall. That hasn't always been the case. In fact, it hasn't been the case really at all until that last game. Let's see if he can back that up with another strong efficiency game and a strong assist game next to Johnny Wall. While with Sterling Brown out and DJ Augustin out, I think that helps Porter as well, by the way, Armani Brooks played really well last game. Does he jump into the consideration for twelve uh, for 20 team leagues? I think he could have a, a decent role. I thought he was really good in that last game for Houston. 
the Mavs. Dorian Finney-Smith playing at a pretty high level at the moment. We we don't expect him to be a world beater or anything like that, but he is providing back-end 12-team league value. Well, Jalen Bronson should go back to the bench with Porzingis likely returning, but still can get 30 minutes with the uh, Timmy Hardaway seemingly in the 21-22 minute a night role at the moment. Bronson can have value. I wouldn't say he's must roster. Well, Ja Morant, someone asked me on the live stream today, hey, if I'm punting assists, is Ja Morant a drop? And, and really, yes, like he, he probably is. Let's see if we can get actually a good game in all areas for Morant. We probably won't. There's just so many deficiencies for him at the moment. Well, the big fella, Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Vasu Inuansas. They're putting up some absolutely monster numbers of late. Yeah, incredible stuff. Double doubles every game. Yeah, field goal percentage through the roof. Blocking shots. And he's had eight blocks in his last three games. I'm not sure I believe in that, but let's see if he can continue on that sort of a good run. The Wizards and the Kings, Daniel Gafford. Uh, hurt his shoulder in the last game, but, but he's fine. He's still on a bit of a minutes restriction, but he's clearly getting the most minutes out of him, Lopez, and Len. At some point, a normal coach would say, let's just move back to two centers and play the best center the majority of those. But this is Scott Brooks, so it's not a normal coach. So we don't really know where that's going to go, but he is a 12-team league guy to me. Well, Denny Avdia um, is not a 12-team league player. He got into some extreme foul trouble last game, so that kept his minutes down. I want to see how he looks. Well, for the Kings, Rashawn Holmes is not going to play. So who is going to replace him? Damian Jones was the guy that replaced him last time. And with Holmes injured, Hassan Whiteside played exactly zero minutes. Now, do does Luke Walton change his mind and put Whiteside in as the starting center? Or does he go with a Jones and Metu combination and play small with Harrison Barnes there? I would expect Whiteside to play a little bit. I wouldn't be adding Jones. If you want to stream Whiteside, sure. But remember, it's a 12-game Wednesday. And is he going to be in your active life? And literally, he played zero minutes. After Holmes was ruled out, he did not sit step on the court, and that was for an entire half. That may not be the case in this game. In fact, I'm almost sure that he will get minutes, but will he get enough to be useful? De'Aaron, Foxy Fox, huge usage, great stuff, but his free throws have fallen back off, so I really want to pay a little bit more attention to his free throw percentage at this stage. Heat and Nuggets, I think Kendrick Nunn will get another start. And without Victor Oladipo, he should be useful for 12-team leagues. Tyler Hero, again, has been playing at a, at a higher level as well without Oladipo. And he's yeah, poking his head into 12-team league discussion. Well, for the Nuggets, the big question is, what do we do without Jamal Murray? Faku Kompazzo and Monty Morris, I think they'll start Kompazzo. I think it'll be like a 27-24 minute split and they'll play together some. But we'll get a better idea after this game of how that all looks. I still think Morris is the better player than Kompazzo. Um, but Campazzo can be a really, really interesting steel streamer, while Morris is great for assists, so that they do work in different areas. But they can both be 12-team league guys. If I had to prioritize one, it would be Morris, but we want to watch both of those guys in this game. In terms of streamers, let's look at Kent Bazemore, Kavon Looney, Maxi Kleber, Grayson Allen. I've got Tony Bradley there. I'm not convinced about that. He didn't play a particularly large role against the Jazz, even though it was a uh, revenge game. So maybe he's not as much of a uh, of a streamer there. And then for points leagues, Bazemore, Baisley, Maladon, Jalen McDaniels, and Jaden McDaniels. Guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And you can subscribe on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the notification bell. Leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Say so, yeah.